Hey guys, this is Irie Starcraft, and I'm back to cast a 3v3 match for you. This one will be on Dig Site, and it's going to be between Vitamin, the Red Zerg, and his partner will be Sorcery, the Blue Terran, and their partner will be DXT, the Teal Zerg, their opponents will be Panerai, the Purple Zerg, and Dust, the Yellow Zerg, and Power, the Orange Terran. So we have ourselves a heavyweight 3v3, ladies and gentlemen. I am so excited to cast this game, and before this game gets too far underway, I wanted to say that I actually don't know who sent me this, and they sent me a whole bunch of games, and I thought I might be able to tell who it was by looking at like the set of replays and being able to see like some common thread of, uh, of name in every single replay and they're different names all over the place so that brings me back to something I said a couple games ago you guys if you don't mind please 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 sign your emails and stuff with your battle net name because it's too hard for me to keep track like I said with Gmail wants to put everyone's real name on everything and I, I just can't keep track of who is who in my head. It is just way too much. I guess I could like set up a spreadsheet or something and put everyone's Battle.net name with their real name. But that really just seems like a hassle. Can't we all go by Battle.net names? Who is going to really start calling each other by real names in this anyway? As it looks like everyone's got a 10 pool coming except for DXT is late on his pool, but it's not that late. Maybe he went for an 11 pool with the extractor cancel. It looks like actually, yes, he did because... His supply says 11 out of 10, so I am smart. And that, or maybe a 12, it would have to have been a 12 for that to work. As, yes, again, I am smart. So I'm pretty excited. This is how I get for these crazy 3v3s. I just get absolutely amped up. And I'm going to do the best I can to keep track of everything, you guys. As you know what's going to happen, Zerglings and Hellions, and we'll see... Who can execute it better, or who will shock me and floor me with something totally different. So the Zerglings are all out now for the most part. DXT is a little bit behind the 8-ball on that, but he is going to have some defensive lings out. Panerai is going to run into DXT's Zerglings here, trying to get a little bit of a surround there, but it's not really going to work. As Zergling Micro, um, DXT doing a nice job microing Zerglings there, but it looks like they're pretty much going to be eye for an eye straight across there. And Dust choosing, I guess, not to engage down here with Vitamin, as Vitamin has quite a bit already with that short reinforcement distance, whereas Dust has to run all the way up here. And so let's check the Terrans, make sure everything is standard here. Power is going for that factory. The reactor swap will be coming, and Sorcery, I guarantee. Same thing coming up here. We'll see if you guys notice um, the second factory is going down for Sorcery. And if you guys notice, um, it would be interesting to see if anybody gives him gas. Um, I'm, cu I'm always curious to see that um, how that is going to work as sometimes what will happen is one of the Zerg players or both Zerg players uh, will leave one uh, drone in gas and then send the extra 50 gas over to the Terran player so that they can get that faster infernal pre-igniter because every split second you can get that pre-igniter faster makes a huge difference as right now power seems to be like two seconds ahead in this Hellion production so it's basically a dead heat right now as you can see, this factory is going to lift off and land on that tech lab to try and get the Infernal Pre-Igniter. Meanwhile, there's really not much battle going on. It's basically a case of the Terran players racing for Infernal Pre-Igniter and Mass Hellions. And so I think the timing is going to be pretty even across the board here. And we will see... <coughs> excuse me there. Uh, because DXT went for the 12 pool, he should theoretically have a slightly higher Zergling count, though he did end up trading Zerglings there with Panerai. So at th that point, that's not going to make a big difference, but really it's going to come down to positioning. And these Hellions are set up in a nice defensive location there. All the Zerglings have speed. And we're just waiting, biding time now. Both teams want to engage again. They want to engage um, near their own base because they can reinforce more quickly. If you remember the game I cast between Kiara's team and Team LMNT, that was a critical factor in that game. Um, the reinforcement distance, when you have a um, much more shared base uh, type of map this one is, um, this guy's kind of the oddball out, but um, pings are going off, so we'll see if that means they're going to try and attack, but it doesn't look like Sorcery's team wants to attack at all. They want to sit there and they want Zergings to run right into the meat grinder up there, and we'll see if the bottom team falls into that. Let's check the Infernal pre Igniter time, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, it is exactly the same. The pre-igniter timing for the Terran players is exactly the same. So both of them are going to be thinking, let's attack right when my pre-igniter ends, but 
<laughs> I think they'll real realize this is how crazy, how good these guys are at their build orders. So here we go. Power is leading the charge with the Hillians. He's going to get the first shot off on the Zerglings, and that could make a big difference moving back. But Sorcery with a much superior spread on his Hellions it seems to be doing a lot more damage. But Power looks like he is starting to overwhelm Sorcery. Oh my god, Sorcery is falling back. Power, I don't think he's even lost any of these Hellions yet and oh my god I'm totally shocked right there I thought that sorcery had the better positioning but apparently I am wrong and it's not that big a deal to have your uh, hellions stacked up depending on what they are shooting and now powers hellions are loose in sorcery's base could that already be game ladies and gentlemen just the fact that power ended up having a better positioning on those uh, hellions I will have to go back and watch that battle if this game is over but the zerglings are streaming in now vitamin and dxt desperately trying to save sorcery's base it does not look like it's going to be enough these pre-igniter hellions are just destroying torching toasting if i forgot toasting is my word of the day as they are toasting up zerglings and with the terran base completely under siege that is going to be game sorcery leaves the game ggs go down so a nice job by the bottom team there. I have to go back. We have to watch that engagement again because the entire game basically just came down to that one little... Uh, uh, Jesus Christ, I swear this thing is so archaic. I've already said this a million times. Okay, I'm going to slow motion this battle once the battle happens. Don't worry. As, um, as soon as that pre-igniter finishes for power, they are going to press up here. And I need to analyze this. Maybe you guys can help me in the... Um, comments down here because I say things like oh this is a way better positioning and then their whole army dies so apparently not here comes the battle this is on slow motion right now and the zerglings running around the side here from DXT really getting clumped up there and I think that actually the positioning may not have necessarily been what cost the top team it may have been the timing of that attack basically what I'm saying is that the fact that um, the, or the positioning originally of the attack, because the Zerglings from the top team were all in the front, and the Zerglings from the bottom team were bringing up the rear. So it wasn't until the Powers Hellions got a couple of shots off that the bottom team brought in their Zerglings, and that allowed them to really um, get a much better surround, because the Zerglings from the top team, um, and that is basically Vitamins, the Zerglings in the front all got roasted up, and then the bottom team Zerglings was able to get around these Hellions a little bit better than the bottom team. As you see, DXT trying to surround the Hellions. A nice job by Panerai protecting those and power scooting back. Zerglings running in here from the bottom and I mean all the Zerglings are dying. This is just crazy. So much roasted death in this battle but that's that is so close you guys. That battle was so so close. The subtle little tiny little differences and you saw how big a difference it made. As soon as this battle is over the game was just over even though Look how close this is, really. Once every once Sorcery begins to retreat, he's only down to eight Hellions. And Power has what? He has um, seven, eight, make it 13 Hellions. So, um, I don't know. It just felt like that battle was so close. And that uh, just, it gets exponentially. Once the tipping point happens and one team takes the advantage in those type of battles, especially with these Hellions, it just is exponentially, it's like falling down a cliff or something because one team will just gain the upper hand so fast anyway that was a very exciting game and i wish i could tell you who sent it to me if you're the one that sent it to me please take credit and post in the comments or send me an email and tell me who you are because i have your folder for, full of replays that look like really really good replays and i don't know who uh sent them to me so anyway that's gonna do it for me um, please thumbs up the vids and sub to the channel if you guys haven't. I really, really appreciate it. And I love reading all your comments, so post some comments for me. And that's going to do it for me. This is Irie Starcraft, and peace out.